to show you how to make the latest towel topper from Creative Kiwi. For this I'm going to be using a 5x7 hoop, two layers of wash away stabiliser per hooping and there are two hoopings to each towel topper. A selection of threads, one that's got a matching bobbin, some pins with heads on them, my squizzes and my fabrics and batting cut to size. I've also got a towel because I'm going to be showing you how to make both versions of the reindeer today. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below. If you would like to win Creative Kiwi loyalty points to the value of this design, then please keep watching as details will be given later on in the video. We're going to start off by hooping our two layers of wash away stabiliser and if you're using a traditional hoop you're going to place your stabiliser over the inside, the outer hoop, sorry. Then insert your inner frame. And then you're going to pin around the top edge of your hoop. And this is going to prevent your stabiliser from being pulled down during the stitching. So take your pin, place it on top of the inside frame push it through the stabiliser, bring it round and back through the stabiliser again and that will anchor it. You're going to do that on all four sides. The larger your hoop of course, the more pins you would use. If you're using a magnetic hoop like this one, place your two layers of stabiliser over the frame, take your end pieces, place that at the top, be careful of your fingers because it can bite, and then I just stretch that like so, and then we're going to do the same with the sides. So I just pull my stabiliser out and slide my clip in place. And your magnetic frame is now ready to use. There's no need to add pins with this generally because there's enough grip from the magnets. So we're now going to do the first hooping. So load file A into your machine. It doesn't matter which version of the reindeer tail topper that you do, you're still going to stitch file A for both versions. And that's for the tab, the antlers and the ears, along with your matching bobbin and thread color for the tab, and I'm going with red. Then you're going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give you your placement outline for your batting for the tab. Place your batting over the outline and I'm using up some scraps here and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care not to cut your stitches. We're now going to add our fabric, both back and front of the hoop. So turn your hoop over, place your fabric for the tab over the outline and tape it in place. Now do the same on the front. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure it. We're now going to stitch round number four and that's going to stitch the outline of the buttonhole. 
if you don't want a buttonhole, maybe you're going to be using cam snaps, then you can skip this step. We're now going to cut out the middle of the buttonhole, but we're going to leave the stabiliser intact because we're going to need that for the satin stitching. So turn your hoop over, take a seam ripper and just create a little hole in your fabric. Just enough to get your scissors in and then trim out the fabric. And then we're going to do the same on the front and this time we need to trim out the batting as well as the fabric. Make sure that you get as much of the fuzzy bits of the batting as possible. Then we're going to pop our hoop into our machine and stitch round number five. And that's going to do the satin stitching around the edge of the buttonhole. And again, if you're going to be using snaps or, or another form of um, closer, then you can skip this step. Trim away the excess fabric from both back and front of your hoop, taking care not to cut the stitches. So turn your hoop over and trim away. Making sure that you've got your matching bobbin and thread colour for the satin stitch border loaded into your machine, you're now going to stitch round number six. So that's the tab completed along with our buttonhole. We're now going to load our matching bobbin and thread colour for the antlers into our machine. Pop your hoop in and then stitch round number seven and that's going to give you your placement outline for your batting. Place your batting over the outlines and I'm just going to arrange my scraps here so that it covers both and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number eight to secure it. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch lines, taking care not to cut your stitches. We're now going to place our fabrics, so turn your hoop over, place your backing fabric over the outlines and tape it in place. Now do the same on the front. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number nine to secure them. excess fabric both back and front of your hoop so turn your hoop over and take care not to cut your stitches
Now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 10 and that's going to quilt the antlers and do the satin stitching around the border. So that's the antlers stitched. We're now going to do the ears. So load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the ears into your machine. Pop your hoop in and then you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give you your placement outline for the batting. And I'm going with a ready brown. Place your batting over the outlines and tape them in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 12 to secure them. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch lines, taking care not to cut your stitches. We're now going to add the fabric both back and front of the hoop, so turn your hoop over. Place your fabric over the outlines and tape them in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 13 to secure them. Trim away the excess fabric from both back and front of the hoop. So turn your hoop over and take care not to cut your stitches. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 14 and that's going to quilt and do the satin stitching around the border of the ears. That's our first hooping stitched and we can now free our work from the hoop. So turn your hoop over and carefully trim around the edge of your parts, taking care not to cut the stitches. That's our first hooping completed and we can set our parts aside for the minute. We're now going to do the second hooping which you will either do the um, setting stitch border or you will do the encased seams version. So you're going to start off by hooping and pinning your um, two layers of wash waste stabiliser if you're using a traditional hoop or um, by hooping your two layers if you're using a magnetic hoop then I've loaded the satin stitch file into my machine that's the one that's got SS in it then you're going to load your bobbin and thread colour for the fabric into your machine and then stitch round number one and that's going to give you your placement outline for your batting. In this version of the tea towel topper we're going to stitch our tea towel into the topper itself so I'm going to turn that round this way 
and we're going to align the corner between these two markers and then we're going to secure it in place and I'm going to put some pins in mine just to hold it firmly because my towel is quite bulky so it's not recommended to use bulky towels but I haven't got anything else We'll see how it goes. We'll adapt. <laughs> okay, so that's that in place. And I'm just going to trim off some of this bulk because I don't really want that um, in with my batting because it make it very, very lumpy. So I'm going to turn this round to the side and just trim across. Now that that's trimmed, I'm going to add just a little bit of tape just to hold those edges down. Okay. So next we're going to place our batting over the top of the outline and tape it in place. I'm just going to fold this up a little bit to control the fabric. It's a very big tea towel, this. I made it myself, so um, that will be fine. Okay, so pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. Now going to trim up the excess batting, taking care not to cut our stitches or our towel underneath. Place your front fabric over the outline and take it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three and that's going to secure your fabric in place and it's going to quilt it as well. So make sure that you've got an appropriate colour loaded in your machine. And I'm going with red. Load your thread colour for the reindeer's head into your machine and then stitch round number four and that's going to give you a placement outline for your fabric and I'm going with a ready brown. We're now going to position our antlers and the ears and you want a set of each but that fit between these two markers. So place your ear to the line and secure it in place. And then right next to it you want the antler and secure that in place as well. Now we're going to do the same over here. Place your fabric for the reindeer's head over the whole lot and secure it in place. 
Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five to secure it all. So your face should now look like this. Load your thread colour for the white of the eyes into your machine and then stitch round number six. Load your thread colour for the black of the eyes into your machine and then stitch round number seven. I've loaded a matching black bobbin into mine as well so that I haven't got two high contrasting colours that could possibly show through on top. Load your thread colour for his nose into your machine and then stitch round number eight and I'm going with red. Load your thread colour for the reindeer's muzzle into your machine and then stitch round number nine and I'm going with a ready brown. Trim away the excess fabric from around the reindeer's head, taking care not to cut any stitches or anything underneath. Pop your hoop back into your machine and stitch round number 10 and that's going to do the satin stitching around his head. So make sure that you've got the right colour loaded in to your machine for that. I'm staying with the ready brown. So this is our topper that we've been working on and this one I've stitched out in exactly the same way as this one the only difference is it hasn't got a towel attached but other than that it's stitched identically this one is going to have the satin stitch border and this one is going to have a piece of elastic on the back and like a pocket that you can tuck the towel into and hang it on the elastic so as of this point here uh, both versions are going to part ways. We're going to carry on with this one and then afterwards I will show you how to do the backing and finish this one off. Okay so carrying on with our satin stitch version we're now going to add our backing fabric so turn your hoop over and place your backing fabric over the whole of the outline and take it in place. Then before we stitch it in place we're going to fold the antlers and the ears out of the way of the stitch line and secure that in place with some tape as well. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the satin stitch border of your topper into your machine. Then pop your hoop in and stitch round number 11 and that's going to secure your backing fabric in place. We're now going to trim away the excess fabric from back and front of the hoop. You're going to leave him playing peekaboo for the minute because we don't want the um, antlers and the ears to get in our way. So we're going to leave them as they are until the end. So turn your hoop over and trim around the edge, taking care not to cut your stitches.
we're now going to stitch round number 12 and that's going to zigzag all the way around and it's going to leave a gap where we're going to join our tab we're now going to attach our tab and you're going to place this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here between where the um, zigzag stitching starts and finishes now you can either have your tab so that it folds over with your button on the front or you can have it so that it folds over with the button on the back it's entirely up to you if you're going to hang this on um, a, the handle of a, a, a cooker door um, an oven door then it would probably be easier for it to attach to the front but it's entirely up to you it doesn't matter its personal uh, preference so let's place this in place and I'm going to attach it with a pin make sure that if you use pins that you keep them right out of the way of the stitch line And I'm going to add a little bit of tape just to stop um, that skewing, or to hold the edges down, sorry. So the pin stops it from skewing and the tape just holds the edges down. So we're now going to pop that into our machine and stitch round number 13 and that's going to zigzag along here and join the two pieces together. We're now going to stitch round number 14 and that's going to do the satin stitch border all the way around our topper. So that's all the stitching for this one finished. We're now going to free this in the hoop. I'm just going to fold that over and stick it down just so that I don't cut it accidentally when I'm trimming this out so turn your hoop over and cut around the edge taking care not to cut your stitches or anything else underneath your hoop okay it's competition time Joshua Hillman was credited with the invention of the first embroidery machine and he received the patent for it in 1829. To take part in this draw, I'd like you to subscribe to this channel and as this channel is about embroidery education, in the comments, give me one fact about his invention. The closing date for this draw is Sunday 3rd of September, 6 p.m. Central European time plus two and a winner will be picked at random from the valid entries and will be announced below and on Creative Kiwi's Facebook group. So be sure to check back to see if it's you. Good luck and thanks for taking part. Now we can unveil this. We're now going to remove all the excess stabiliser. So take a cotton bud and some warm water, dip it in and just wipe it around the edge. Just a little bit on the back here where the join was. And that's our embroidered edge towel topper finished. All I've got to do now is attach my button and I'm just going to bring that over, line it up 
and then stitch it in place. I'm now going to set this aside for the minute. For the encased seam version, you're going to stitch colours 1 to 10 as I've already shown you. Then we're going to add the tab, the backing fabric, the elastic and the lining all in one go. So before we do that, turn your hoop over and this stitch line here, you want to extend it with a pencil so that you can see it from the other side because that's going to be your placement line and I've just marked it up so that you can see it clearly you probably won't have to do it on the front because you'll be able to see through but just so that you can see what I'm doing then we're going to fold the antlers and the ears out of the way and take them down Place your tab face down and you want it in the centre and you want this stitch line here, this side of this stitch line here. You want it nice and central and straight. Then fold the rounded edge back and tape it in place. That's going to keep it clear of this stitch line here because when it travels around we don't want the tab getting caught, this end of the tab should I say, getting caught up in there. Okay so then we're going to take our um, backing fabric with the um, wrong sides together, the um, crease you want to line with your um, um, pencil marks. You don't want this fold over this stitch line here because you want the opening. So once that's in place, place your elastic halfway down. I'm just using the markers of my hoop to line that up and tape it in place. Then take your lining fabric and you want right side down on top of your hoop and you want to make sure that it doesn't come to the top of this line here because you want to be able to turn everything later on. So I'm just bringing that up to here and then you can tape that in place. And you're going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 11 and that's going to secure everything to the hoop and I've loaded a green thread and bobbin into my machine. Now that that's stitched, I'm just going to fill down here just to make sure that the um, fold hasn't caught into here. It shouldn't have because we placed it back um, in the right position. So now we're going to free this from the hoop and trim everything up. I'm just going to remove my pins. And we're now going to cut around, trim around the edge of the stitch line, leaving about a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around. And we're going to clip on the curves as well so that we get nice um, turns. We're going to cut across on the diagonal for our, cor for our corners 
taking care not to cut our stitches. And then we're just going to snip in towards the stitch line on the curves. And now we're going to turn this out the right way, pushing into our corners to make sure that they're nice and neat. all the tape that's holding the antlers and the ears. We're now going to remove the excess stabilizer from around the edge of the ears and the tab. So take your cotton bud and some warm water, dip it in and wipe it around the edge of the stitch line. And now we're going to press this before we add our cam snap. We're now going to add a cam snap rather than a button like I did on the previous one. So I did the previous one going forward, so I'm going to do this one folding backwards. So I'm just going to fold that over and take a sharp um, pointed uh, awl, line it up and push all the way through the two pieces, making sure that of course that they're lined up properly. And I'm going to mark this in blue so that you can see it. Okay, there's two, two, three pieces actually to these snaps. You've got the male, you've got the female, and you've got the button that's got a spike on it. And you want a button with a spike on it for each part. Then you're going to push your button through the hole that you've just created. right the way through and then you're going to place one of the either the male or the female on the back then take your setting tool place the button in the black cup and the male or the female goes into the clear silicon part line it and then just squeeze really hard and that's now set so that's going to come down here like that. We're now going to do exactly the same. Push the spiky button through the other hole. Place the other, um, in this case, male on top so that when that comes down, that will clip into there. Place the button into the black cup and squeeze and that is now set so all that remains is to insert the towel and I'm just going to wrap it around the elastic That's hidden on the inside. And 
and that's our towel toppers complete I hope you enjoyed this stitch along if you did please give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new videos as soon as they're published do pop along to Creative Kiwi's Facebook group there's always lots of ideas help and inspiration there for everybody and thank you very much for joining me you'll find a link to this design in the video description below along with lots of other information such as where I get my supplies and some discount codes for you as well. Take care and I'll see you next time.